Um, I'm never going to think of Christmas the same way now. Uh, and now there's a man lurking behind me. He's lurking. He lurked at the door when you came in. Now he's lurking over there. And now he's going to come and lurk right in front of you, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, this is Die Low. Thank you. Thank you. I'm lurking on the threshold. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm not having a good day, actually. I, uh, I'll never forget the first day they told me I had Alzheimer's. Uh, actually, at school, I was called the professor. I was called the professor because I was so absent-minded, so it's not a new thing. But I came out to help fly a Woody show at two o'clock, her fingers can over, um, and uh, realised I'd left my phone at home. So I went back home, moved the phone from the bedside table into the kitchen, uh, had a little rest, came in, and it's still on the kitchen table. So uh, it, it's not good. I'll never forget the phone. Oh, no, I've done that. Uh, <laughs> I, I, actually, I'm very fond of sloth. I actually invented a game many years ago, a board game called How to Be a Complete Three-Toed Sloth. And the most dangerous time in a sloth's life is when it's young and hasn't yet grown the moss because it's very visible. And then sloths try to wait till it's raining to piss. Because the eagles hear them pissing, and in the rain they don't. So if you have a bit of a drought and you can't hold your bladder as a sloth, you're fucked to be honest. <laughs> but no, you see, I think we do a lot of stuff. A lot of people in this in this uh, regular team are um, of a certain age, and uh, we love having younger folk guesting because we can then sacrifice them and bathe in their blood afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> but don't tell them that. Um, and, uh, but uh, you know, I'm. I, you know, I was born in the 50s. I, I went to the 1960s once and it was so good I stayed for 10 years. And I think, as Wordsworth would have said of the 60s, bliss was it in that dawn to be alive, but to be young was fucking ace. <laughs> and then we got paid to go to uni, we got grants, we got made our fees paid, and now I've got an old person's bus pass and can go anywhere I want in Scotland for nothing if I can remember where I was heading for when I got on the bus. <laughs> but we, there's a lot we do, we, you'll find later on, we will refer to various young people's crazes, and I, far from failing to understand them at all, which I sometimes do, I'm jealous of them. You know, we, we didn't have smartphones and, and all these other gizmos, even ones we could leave at home. Um, but a major topic this year, which you will hear a bit more about later, is Pokemon Go. And I saw, sitting by the canal the other day, saw people walking past, photographing something that wasn't there, and realised that's what they were doing, and following, instead of looking where they were going, following the map. And I was just waiting for one of them to think, oh, I can cut this corner and go straight into the canal. But it, nobody drowned. It was a very disappointing day. But that inspired me to parody the work of uh, Lewis Carroll, The Hunting of the Snark, uh, in uh, a modern version based on Pokemon. Although, to be honest, the Skrelp has yet to make it into Pokemon Go, but it's a Pokemon monster. And apparently it's a brown aquatic Pokemon that resembles a sea dragon. At level 48, it evolves into Dragaigle. <laughs> so anyway, this is my poem, The Hunting of the Skrelp. Just the place for a Skrelp? The smartphone spake with a snatch of annoying song, directing its owner straight into a lake, because the nutter was holding it wrong. Just the place for a Skrelp, it told him once more, but to find it, please upgrade your app. Just the place for a monster, or possibly four, but your handset is cheap, old and crap. The phone was replaced, costing plenty of dough, with all its old software improved. And the latest edition of Pokemon Go, with all he'd caught so far, removed. As I sit in the park from dawn until dark, each stumbles by with a device in a virtual space with emotionless face. An invasion of zombified mice. They seek them with tablets, they seek them on phones, they seek them on Kindle Fire. They'd seek them with cameras mounted on drones if the batteries didn't expire. Don't think all this nonsense is making me mad, a curmudgeonly old-fashioned fellow, though I come from a time when the monsters were bad and a poke stop was just a bordello. But back to our hero with store set at zero on a phone that was shiny and new. He tried online help as to finding a Skrelp, because he didn't know what else to do. He sought it with tablets, he sought it on phones, he sought it on Kindle Fire. He sought it with cameras mounted on drones from Devon to Clackmannanshire. Though a Skrelp is quite small and worth next to sod all, as he blamed it for clearing his decks, it became his obsession to get this possession more important than sleep, food or sex. But the spirit of Turing appeared in a dream, the Olympian god of computing, saying some of these monsters are not what they seem, beware of the wheedles of tooting. 
The Diglets in Dudley live secretive lives of which it is best not to speak, and the Arbox of Leicester bonk other men's wives on Tuesday and Thursday each week. But the Skrelp's the most treacherous one of the lot. He leaned forward to seem confidential, and will often appear to be just what it's not. It's a nightmare that's quite existential. But avoid any quarrels and look to your laurels if your Skrelp be a squirtle, for then your circuits will fry and your handset will die, and you'll never make phone calls again. With that warning, the vision dissolved into smoke by some typical dreamtime magic, and our man was left thinking, he seemed a nice bloke, what a pity his end was so tragic. But he woke all a tremble, he woke in a sweat, he woke in a temperate zone, he woke feeling queasy and rather upset at the risk to his safety and phone. Nonetheless, the next day he was soon on his way with a step that was springy and light, and once he began, he declared it was fun, monster hunting from morning till night. He sought it with tablets, he sought it on phones, he sought it with Kindle fire, he sought it with cameras mounted on drones, and an almost fanatic desire. No photos, please. He bumped into that post, he tripped over dogs, and stood in the spots where they'd been. In Ikea, he spilled piles of new catalogues with his eyeballs still glued to his screen. As he wandered about, he repressed all his doubt at the fear at the back of his head, of what it might ensue, and what he should do if his Skrelp be a Squirtle instead. Then he found himself back in the place he'd begun. Well, sorry, in the place where he started. And the phone played that song once again. He danced and he sang, he hiccuped and farted with the joy that spilled out of his brain. <laughs> On the shore of the lake, there could be no mistake, though in low light it might look like kelp. Just about halfway down was the purple and brown of a fragilely wondrous Skrelp. His hands they were shaking, his eyeballs were aching, the pattern drained out of his socks. He sang a grand anthem he'd once heard in Grantham as he pointed his lens at the rocks. But then something happened, obscure and obscene, he shuddered in shock, fear and awe, as the purple and brown turned a pale bluey green, and that was the last thing he saw. With a bone-shaking crash and an eye-binding flash that burned a huge hole in his chest, his circuits had fried as he and his phone died, for the Skrelp was a sk oh, you'd guessed. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Philo. And I've had a book. I've had a book. And 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 I've